Uh, today, we're going to be reacting to a video by Ber Brene Brown on sympathy and empathy. <gasps> nice music. Good intro. So what is empathy and why is it very different than sympathy? Empathy fuels connection. Sympathy drives disconnection. Now, why on earth would we take a word, sympathy, that has been used positively for thousands of years? We have a high priest who can sympathize with us in our weakness, Hebrews tells us. This, for, that, for millennia, sympathy has been a good thing. True sympathy has been a good thing. False sympathy, of course, not so much, but true sympathy has been a good thing. Empathy is a newfangled word just developed in the last century or so, I think. And all of a sudden, it's going to be the good, good guy over against the bad guy sympathy. Something fishy is going on. Empathy, it's a, it, very interesting. Teresa Wiseman is a nursing scholar who studied professions, very diverse professions, where empathy is relevant, and came up with four qualities of empathy. Perspective taking. Four qualities. Four, four things. Okay. Perspective taking. Perspective taking, which means that you step into the shoes of the other person. You are with them entirely. You share with them. You are there completely. You take their perspective. You look out at the world through their eyes, which means, of course, that if the person you're empathizing with is in trouble, at least partially of his own making, you will be unable to help him because you have engaged in perspective taking. The ability to take the perspective of another person or, or recognize their perspective as their truth. Note that deadly phrase. There's poison in that phrase, their truth. How about the truth? What is the truth? What is the truth that overarches these two creatures, this, this bear and this fox? What, what is the truth, not their truth? So when you, take, when, when you engage in perspective taking, you are abandoning objectivity. Staying out of judgment, not easy when you enjoy it as much as most of us do. Staying out of judgment. In other words, there is absolutely no room for uh, evaluating how this situation developed. How many times have we dealt with someone going through troubles and they're going through troubles of their own making? They're going through troubles of their own devising. Now, you, of course, you don't want to show up like Job's friends and blame him for, you know, for, you don't want to vocalize everything that you think. But if you stay out of judgment, if you take their perspective and recognize their truth and you stay out of judgment, that means that just like the person who's suffering, you might not know what's going on either. Recognizing emotion in other people and then communicating that. Recognizing emotion in other people, which of course sympathy does as well, and then communicating that you recognize that emotion, which of course sympathy does as well. What sympathy does not do is completely identify with the person who's suffering. It's the difference between someone drowning in a river and you keep one foot on the bank and you uh, extend your arm to them because you've got a foot on the bank. That's not an unfair advantage. It means you're in a position to help. Uh, empathy, the way we've defined it, their truth, perspective taking, no judgment. That means you have to take a header in the river with them and start drowning alongside them. Empathy is feeling with people. The prefix sim in sympathy means with. Sympathy is feeling with people. Um, empathy is, according to Brene Brown's definition, empathy is complete identification. You're, you're all in. There's, no, there's nothing that you hold back. There's no reserve. It's their truth. You've taken their perspective. You don't judge anything. You're in it with them completely and totally. And that is disastrous. And to me, I always think of empathy as this kind of sacred space. Sacred space. No, we're divinizing this. When someone's kind of in a deep hole and they shout out from the bottom and they say, I'm stuck, it's dark, I'm overwhelmed. And then we look and we say, hey, and climb down. I know what it's like down here. Do you really? 
And in just a moment, we're going to be introduced to a deer character who says all, si- all kinds of stupid, thoughtless, clunky things. But this could be made into a clunky thing. I know what it's like down here. Suppose you don't know what it's like. Suppose they just lost a child and you've never lost a child. Suppose something disastrous has just happened to them. Do you really want to walk into someone's dark space and say, I know what it's like down here? Suppose you don't. Maybe it would be necessary to be sympathetic, eh? And you're not alone. Sympathy is, ooh, (laughs) it's bad, uh uh-huh. Uh, no. You want a sandwich? Um. This is what you might call refutation through funny voices or refutation through making your uh, character say ludicrous things. It's a, it's a variation of the straw man fallacy. This is straw deer. This is a decoy deer. This is a, uh, a position that is easily refuted. Eh? Want a sandwich? Empathy is a choice, and it's a vulnerable choice, because in order to connect with you, I have to connect with something in myself that knows that feeling. Yeah, but suppose you don't know that feeling. You might be saying, I know what it's like down here, when you might not know what it's like down here. How, what are you supposed to do when you are loving people who are going through a worse time than you've ever had? Rarely, if ever, does an empathic response begin with at least. At least I know what it's like down here. I had a, yeah. And we do it all the time. Because you know what? Someone just shared something with us that's incredibly painful, and we're trying to silver lining it. I don't think that's a verb, but I'm using it as one. We're trying to put the silver lining around it. So I had a miscarriage. At least you know you can get pregnant. I think my marriage is falling apart. At least you have a marriage. John's getting kicked out of school. At least Sarah is an A student. But one of the things we... At least you have a bear down in this hole that knows what it's like. (laughs) But one of the things we do sometimes in the face of very difficult conversations is we try to make things better. If I share something with you that's very difficult, I'd rather you say, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm just so glad you told me. Because the truth is, rarely can a response make something better. What makes something better is connection. And for the last 2,000 years, there have been people sympathizing with other people and doing it with uh, honesty and integrity. Who uh, the, the person who is comforted comes back later and says, you know, when you were with me during that dark time, I don't even remember what you said. I just remembered that you were there with me. Yeah, that's, this is true enough. But why on earth do you have to make sympathy into a bad thing? 